Hey everybody, it is Christine. Welcome here, welcome back. If you're new, I am a homeschool mama to three kids and I share homeschool content here on this channel. Today I'm gonna to be sharing with you the lessons that I learned after my first full year homeschooling because maybe it'll help you out if you're a new homeschooler. If you are in a, a seasoned homeschooler, you may be like, yeah, I remember that too. <laughs> um, so yeah, if that sounds like you, stick around. And if you are new and you're interested in homeschool content, please go ahead and subscribe. I, I was so happy this week because I got a couple of messages from people just saying that they found stuff on here really helpful. And that just, like, I it made me so happy because I share stuff, but I'm really in the trenches with you and I'm learning along with you. So you're just following my journey and my mistakes and my successes. And I appreciate that that's really helpful to some of you because um, I am not an expert at all. You know, like I'm learning right along with you. So I'm just very, very thankful that people are getting value out of what I share basically. Anyway, I am going to share what I've learned. So keep watching. This last school year was my son's kindergarten year. He was five. I had a three-year-old daughter at the time and a one-year-old, which, I'm not even gonna lie, that was crazy. It was hard with the one-year-old. Um, so last year was very much about finding our footing, find, finding what worked and what didn't. It was also the year of craziness, as we all know, which, I mean, it affected us, but not drastically. I live in New Zealand. We actually don't have any community cases here and we haven't for a couple of months now, um, which is, I'm very thankful for. Um, so that just, it made it for a funky year for everybody, but it didn't like change it that much for us. Um, if anything, it made it kind of easier because we had more time to focus on learning to homeschool. Uh, I was homeschooled myself for a chunk of my uh, student life. But that does not make someone an expert on homeschooling. Um, so we all have our lessons to learn and obviously all of our children are different. And so, yeah, this is what I have learned. I've written down a few things. The first one is to be flexible. And I kind of knew that going into it, but I have a type A personality. And so it can be a lot harder to like actually follow through on that. <laughs> but anyway, learning to be flexible to and this probably applied more because I had a baby than it did to my actual children, like my older kids. They were actually okay. There were definitely times where I had to step back because my son was frustrated with things, like learning to read, and we had to like stop for a few weeks and just have a break. Um, but most days it was because the baby wasn't cooperating and we just had to take a break and try again later. So learning to be flexible is so key. It's so important. The next thing that I learned is that time is often the best teacher in the early years because there are things that your child will learn so much more easily if they are developmentally ready for it, namely reading. <laughs> I think, I mean, I saw a post the other day about a mother stressing because her two-year-old didn't know her letters of the alphabet yet. And I'm like, they don't need to know their letters at two. And honestly, this is not, I'm... I have friends that send their kids to public school and things like that, so please don't think it's me like judging dis parents' decisions to send their kids to school. I do think, however, it is really sad that the whole point of preparing your kids, like making them learn their alphabet and all that kind of stuff, is so that they're ready to go to school. Like, what is the point of school if you have to prepare them to be ready to go to school? You know what I mean? And like, at what point does it become like ridiculous to be preparing them for things. Like as soon as they're born, you need to be educating them. Anyway, I, that's just a rant. But um, there's just so much to be said for waiting until your child is ready. And it's not, I also don't like the um, school of thought where it's like you cannot do any academics until age six or age seven. Like, no, I'm sorry. If your child's asking to learn, you let them learn. Um, I just think that it should be a pressure-free approach for both yourself and your child Obviously, this is just my opinion, so take it with a grain of salt. This is what has worked for us. My son, I noticed this, he would get so frustrated with a concept, um, whether it be reading or math. Usually it was reading. Math, he was pretty like onto it, but with reading. And so we'd stop for a few weeks and then we'd go back to it and he would have aced it and jumped ahead by miles. So I actually had someone comment about this on one of my other videos and 
I was like, yes, yes, agreeing with that because they were saying, you know, with, in her experience, kids just sometimes need a break and then they will pause or and then they'll jump ahead and that is normal. There is nothing that you're doing wrong. It's just the way that kids learn and it's just so much nicer when they're ready for it, you know? Okay, the next one is to work on your own schedule. Last year, I followed the school's terms here in New Zealand, which are 10-week terms with two-week breaks throughout the year, and then we have like a six to eight-week summer break, and I hated it. <laughs> it was horrible. It was so long. 10 weeks was just too long of a school term for us. We were all over it by the end of the term, and so this year, I've decided that we're going to do six six week terms um, with a one week break in between one just so we can break up a little bit more and I can feel less burnt out and my kids can feel less burnt out. So I just would encourage you that just because the school does it that way, you don't necessarily have to. I mean, obviously you need to make sure that wherever you live, you abide by their regulations. Here in New Zealand, thankfully we have little to none. We just need to prove that we are schooling our children as well as they would be schooled if they were attending. Um, a registered school. So we have a lot of flexibility. So if you have that, take advantage of it and make your own schedule and go with the flow. <laughs> and then finally, the last thing I learned is that to chop and change between curriculums is fine. It's totally fine. It's okay. If you try a curriculum and it's really just not working for your child, it is okay to stop that curriculum and find something else that works better. That is what I did last year and it worked it, we both learned so much through it. I mean, it helped my son, but it also just helped me to understand how he learns a lot better and to know what works for him. And so I just want to encourage you, especially if you're a new homeschooler, to be open to that. Um, it can be challenging if you've spent a lot of money on a curriculum, so I would encourage you to buy secondhand when possible um, or buy like digital copies that you can print off is often like a great way to go. But just having it's again being flexible but just knowing mentally that it's okay to stop and like I mean if you've watched many of my videos you probably know that we started with the good and the beautiful for language arts last year and then it just wasn't working well for him and so we had to stop we switched to all about reading and I was so sad because I love the good and the beautiful I love their curriculum I think it's so pretty and beautiful <laughs> and so I was really sad to stop it well turns out we ended up going back to it at the end of the year and not because I didn't like all about reading. It's just that that's what worked best for my son at the time. Um, and we might switch back and forth again this year. And so you just never know what your child is going to need exactly and when they'll need it. And so it's just being open to it and realizing just because you're not using it right now doesn't mean you won't use it forever. And don't be too emotionally attached to a curriculum because the point is to school your child how they learn best, not to try and fit your child to work for a specific curriculum, you know? So those are the things that I learned. I don't know um, if you can relate to any of it. If you can, um, let me know in the comments. I know that there are a lot of new homeschoolers at the moment and um, I'm just curious to see how your first year is gone or is going. Share them below, share your struggles, share your successes. This is a community here and I like to think that we would all encourage it encourage one another and lift each other up. That's certainly my intention here. So share what you want below and um, yeah, it'll be good to have a discussion. Anyway, I need to wrap this up. My kids are gonna come in and interrupt. So I hope you found this video helpful and I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye-bye. What if the world had more of your smile? What if the wind could spread your love? What if your sweetness could reach everyone? There'd be no wars.